Hi, and welcome to Mike's Garage. So today we're going to talk about inverter maintenance. So what are some of the common things that you need to do every six months to keep your inverter running at its peak while also keeping you safe? So that's what we're going to go over today. If you have a 12,000 XP like I do, the first thing that you're going to want to do is clean out the air filter. So you can see there's an upper and lower filter. There are two screws on the bottom and top for each filter. Go ahead and open that up, remove the filter, rinse it under cold water, and then once it's clean and dry, go ahead and put it back in. You should do that every six months. If you are in a dust-prone area, then you might have to do it a little more often. The next thing that you're going to do is check the bracket on the back and ensure that there's no cracks on the bracket, that everything is still nice and secure and make sure that it is not loose at all. Next, you're going to check your connections, both on your inverter itself, T-class fuses, bus bars, and batteries. You're going to check the torque on all of them to make sure that they are torqued properly. Most of the fires that are caused by DIY solar setups is actually due to loose connections. One thing that you could do is get a infrared thermometer, and this one is made by Ames. I believe I picked this up at Harbor Freight, and what you can do is check the temperature of each one of your connections, and you want to make sure that under heavy load that all of your connections are staying very close to the ambient temperature. Pay close attention to see if there are any abnormal noises, any sort of hum, or anything that kind of stands outside of the norm. If you do hear a humming noise or you hear a abnormal fan noise, definitely jot that down and contact PG4. You're also going to want to check the temperature from the fans and also ensure that the fans are all working. So when the fans kick in due to a high load, make sure that all four fans are spinning. Finally, if you have a multimeter, check the output. You should receive 240 volts on L1 and L2. Make sure that you have that and it's not lower than what you've recorded previously. The reason why you want to do that is if for some reason the output stage of the inverter had any sort of issues, you might notice that the voltage is lower than you're typically used to, or the lights are flickering. Now, when you turn on a heavy load, you're going to have a quick flicker, and that's due to voltage drop. But typically, if you see your lights flickering all the time, then that constitutes an issue that you're going to want to reach out to the manufacturer for. If you do have an oscilloscope, you can always check the output of your inverter to make sure that the sine wave is nice and clean. So that's it. Thanks again for watching Mike's Garage. If you have any other questions about your inverters, please put them in the comments. And I look forward to speaking with you in the next video.